Hello everyone, my name is Bob Peace. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time of checking out this channel, just hit on the red button to subscribe and then the notification bell. Today's tutorial will be on how to make an A-line gown, a long gown with Chinese collar. And trust me, it is very easy to make. So you need the length of your gown. The length of my gown is 62 inches with Emin um, allowance inclusive. So that's 62 inches. But African prints in length, it comes by 45, which will not be enough. So that means I will have to fold along the width. So what I will do is this. Looking at this, I'll have to fold it this way. I'll just measure 62 inches. This is along the width. So this is 62 inches. Then from here, I'll now have to fold this over. So this will be the required fabric I'll use for the gown. Then after folding it this way, I'll have to fold it over again so i'll just take my time to adjust it well fabric is being folded now can you see what i have so and i said i want the length of 62 inches width i mean allowance inclusive so i just have to cut that out and i made this 62 and half then draw this baseline of half inch because of the upper part so the next thing now is to insert a vertical measurement in case you don't know how to take your accurate body measurement just check out my video on how to take your measurement. I'll put it link in the description box below. The first step now is half of my armhole, which is eight and a half. That is here. The next one will be my waist, which is 16 and a half. After the waist goes the hip. My vertical hip measurement is 24. So I'll just stop there and make all this point into a straight line. After making them into a straight line, the next thing is to go for the 3 inches, 8 inches standard. If you don't know all this, just check out my video on how to make a basic bodice pattern. So 3 inches, then 8 inches. From here, I'll just come down by 1 inch. So this is to determine the slope. The next thing is to start the shoulder measurement half of my shoulder measurement is eight and a half which is here and eight and a half will be inserted on the chest line where you have half of your armhole i'll draw a straight line i'll get the midpoint which is three and three quarter for the front armhole i'll go in by three quarter inch and then take my armhole First, I'll connect the back arm hole. This is it. This is for the back. And this is for the front. And I'll finish it up this way. Having done that, I will just insert the horizontal measurement. Quarter of my bust measurement is 10 and a half, but I'll just make it 11 because I want the gown to be so free. 11, you could even add up to 1 inch. If you want it to be free, so that's 11, 1 inch for the size seam allowance. Then I'll go over to my waist. Quarter of my waist is 9 inches. But here I'm going to use 10 because I want it to be free. So this is 10 inches. Then 1 inch for... Going over the waist measurement again, I said my waist divided by 4 is 9 inches. But because I want this garment to be free, I'll just add extra one to it to make it 10 inches. So 10 inches is here. But remember, you have to add one inch side seam allowance to it, so it makes it 11. Going over to the hip measurement, quarter of my hip measurement is 11, but I'm going to make it 11 and a half. Plus one inch. So that's the one inch side seam allowance. Before we go to... So let me just connect all these points. So from the boss to the waist, then with my hip curve from my waist to my hip. If you are interested in the tools, they are still available. The contact number will be in the comment section below. So now we can move this upward. So now let's connect from the hip down to the hem of the dress. So right now, 
this is the hem of the dress what do you do in this case just measure whatever you have here here i have 12 and a half so just have the minimum of five inches to eat you can have up to six seven to eat but the minimum should be five so 12 and a half i'll have to have five so that would be one two three four five then plus the half inch so it will be 11 and a half you can make it 18 that totally depends on you i'll place that here this is 11 and a half you see that and i'll connect from this hip measurement straight down here on the hip now this is what we have now that was pretty easy the next thing now is to come up by one and a half to two inches here so i'll just go up by two inches then use my hip cuff to connect from here down here let me see the way i place my hip cuff so i will have to cut through this way i'll start cutting from the lower part so when i get to the shoulder part i'll have the seam allowance and then we'll go over to the neckline because the neckline is very very essential because we're having a chinese color with this this is what it looks like and you see that so now we we'll go over to the neckline this is very very technical this part is very technical because we're having a chinese color so you have to pay attention i trim up the back one first before we continue so here we are going to have the half inch shoulder allowance don't forget that so half inch here half inch from here and i'll connect with my ruler so now the shoulder allowance have been added so now for the neck width i will make it three and a half but normally for an average person you can use two and a half or three but i will make mine three and a half because i don't want it too tight so this is three the remaining half will be along this slope so that's that now for the depth for the depth of the back i will make it half an inch because we are having a chinese color so half an inch will be here so this is half an inch then for the front the depth will be three inches please take note of that and i'll use my hammer curve to connect for the front this is the front from the three and a half if you are using three it will be here so i'll have to connect this way and you see that then from the front i'll just place my hammer here i want to get a perfect round neckline so this is for the back and this is for the front then i'll cut the back first so before i trim off the front you have to note the measurement of the back and the front but we are not cutting out the front because we still have to remove the back before we trim off the front so just measure whatever you have here this is for the back so for the back i have three and half so this is three and half then for the front for the front i have five inches you have to make note of that then i want a deeper neckline here just a slit in front but let me remove the back then we can finish the front now i can finish the front mm -hmm. so back to the neck because i still want it to go in deeper so what i'll do is this from this front panel i'll just go in half an inch then from this depth remember from here down here is three i'll just make it four four this is four inches then with my ruler i'll just connect i want it to be very tiny because by the time i finish it up it will still be exposed so this is what i have and i'll trim this off gently i'll be finishing it up with the facing this part so i'll show you how to do that 
Now for the facing for this part, this is what it looks like after cutting it. Can you see that? So I will need a facing to finish on that side. So I'll fold it back. So I just got this piece of fabric, fold it. This is on fold. I'll put it beneath. Make sure the folded line matches. Let me see what I have here. So now I'll just trim. Make sure the next one. So now this is what I have. So from here down a bit from that from that slit and I'll just trim this up because it's like a V let me just trim this off for you to see it well then I'll take this and connect to have about two inches This is what I have. So now let's go over to the Chinese color. Remember what I told you when we measured for the back? I had three and a half. So for the front, it was five. But because I'm going to take in half an inch to finish up these slits, so instead of five now, I'm going to make it four and a half because I'll be taking in half an inch. So now I'll be making use of four and a half instead of five. So now let's cut the collar. I'll be drafting the collar on the interfacing. Like here I have a, a stiff one and here I still have a medium light one. So you can use any one depending on your choice. But I would go for this big one because it's a stand collar. So it's who I want it to always be standing even after washing. So what I'll do now is this. Remember I said the measurement for both the back and the front is one is three and a half, the other one is four and a half. So together it makes eight inches. So what I will do now is to draw a straight line first. So this is my straight line. So for the back neck, the back neck is three and a half. So this is three and a half for the back neck. The front neck is four and a half. So this is what I have. So then I'll just move upward to measure it to have a straight line. Can you see that? So I want the collar to be one and a half without the without the seam allowance. That totally depends on you. You can make it one and quarter. It totally depends on. You. Maybe I okay. I should make it one and quarter. One and quarter is here. I'll come down to this area to make it one and quarter to this one and quarter. Then make this into a straight line. Can you see that? So the next thing is to measure half an inch from the baseline, half an inch upward here half an inch upward can you see that then i will take my hip hole to connect from this half inch down here you can use your hammer core so this is what i have then here this is also the measurement for the back neck then i'll come here have this and you see that our collar is formed then here you just need to make a curve. You can make a curve and you can decide to leave it like that. That totally depends on you. I can use my hammer curve to do that. So now I'll just use my hammer curve to make the curve. So this is what I have. Can you see that? So the next thing now is to cut the so make sure it's properly on fold. <coughs> Just 
position this ball and make sure so make sure it's on forward because it's stiff so it's moving around and I'll turn it this way that was pretty easy then I'll place this on my fabric to now cut out the fabric so looking at this fabric now this is the wrong side of the fabric this is the wrong side this is also the wrong side so the right side are facing each other because you want to cut it right side facing each other so I'll put this on fold then place the collar on it let me see that supposed to be like this make sure the folded area is on the folded area then you are going to add the quarter inch all through because that will be the seam allowance quarter inch or half inch that totally depends on you so you just make this although if i'm making my just high bodies and you see that quarter inch so this will be for the hemming allowance So this is what I have. Can you see the allowance has been added? So now I can remove this to cut out this. going to fuse this to one of the panel which will be for the back looking at this this is what I have now so one of these has been fused can you see the fusible the interfacing has been fused to one of the fabrics and then I folded in the seam allowance so what I will do now is to take to my sewing machine and sew very close to this interfacing so sewing both together so then I will sew it this way straight down with this inward so that's a side then let's go over to this so now remember this was the facing I cut out for the slit here so I'll have just place it this way and you see that I'll just place it like this so then sew in half an inch or quarter inch depending on the same allowance you left then I will turn it in after turning it in then I will use my overlocking machine to finish up these edges let me do that and show so looking at the color now you can see I sewed very close to the edge then I can trim it off initially this part and you see I'm trimming it off to be so close to it so it will so now after trimming I can now turn in and out can you see that pretty easy then I'll use my pressing iron to just finish it up so now this is what it looks like can you see the opening this is where I will attach to the main one before covering it up so I'll just set this aside then show you the neckline can you see this so this is on the right side can you see? so what I will do is to make sure I cut this closer to the seam please do not cut through the seam after doing that, you can top stitch to the lining, then you turn it in this way. You see that? So what I will do now is to finish it up with my pressing iron, then just use my overlocking machine to end this to put it in place. So this is what it looks like on the left side. So now, that's on the wrong side. So on the right side, can you see everything is well finished? So the next thing now is for me to join it at the shoulder before attaching the collar. So looking at it now, I've joined the shoulders and then press open the seams. So what I'll do now is this. This is my collar. This is the right side of your fabric. So where you have this seam allowance now, you will attach it. 
cooking it this way can you see that this is the right side of my fabric this is the wrong side so i'll now place this here and you see then i'll start sewing from here but note you have to check because it has to match and you see let me just do a quick one a quick one a quick one So if it doesn't match then you need to go back to your table so now okay that's very good so it matches can you see that i just clean it down with a pin so that means we are okay so after sewing it that way then the next thing will now be to finish it up this way can you see that then we have our chinese collar so let's go to the sewing machine so now I will remove my pin and start sewing. So whatever allowance you left, and don't forget to backstitch. Then you keep sewing all through. And I'll keep removing the pins. Make sure the fabric matches. Can you see that? And you keep going all through till the end. Now we are almost at the end. And you see everything matches so well then i can remove my pin and then finish up the edges make sure it matches take your time and you see that then i will finish it up so looking at it you can see our dress is taking shape but this part is still open so what i will do now is to make sure all this seam allowance goes in inward and then i'll start sewing one eighth or even one sixteenth of an inch from here, make sure all the seam allowance are inward. Then I'll start sewing one eighth of an inch on it till the other side. So now all the seam allowance has to go inside, and then I have to cover it up and start sewing it. Can you see that? I'll keep doing that all through. So after attaching it, this is what it looks like. Can you see that? So I'll just give it a good press. The next thing now is to attach my basic sleeve and then sew the sides. Now this is what the garment looks like. Can you see? It's very nice, easy. I'll just put it on for you to see how we did. This is the result of the dress we just made. Can you see the color is standing so well? Just give it a try and share with us on our Facebook group Sewing Innovations on Facebook. Search for it. And make sure you tell your friends about this channel. Subscribe. Click it.